There's a crystal who just shed. Blue-eyed, white and pink snake. And they are gorgeous. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And uh, today we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, remodeling in the snake room. We're going to be putting lights in our vision cages. We're not going to get it all done today, but Pablo's going to get started on it. Uh, we want to really, really raise the level of what we can see in, in the snake room. Everything's functional right now in the snake room, but we want to really upgrade the uh, the lighting and all the, um, the vision cages. And eventually we'll get to the animal plastics cages as well. So we can see our animals better. Maybe we can put some decorations in there and uh, really liven it up. I'm going to be getting some, some monitors. I'll talk about that uh, probably next week or so. Uh, I also have my friend Paul Miller is going to be bringing over some really cool tree boas. You're going to see those as well. So we're setting stuff up. And little by little, we're going to build our own little palumbarium. <laughs> I don't want to call it the Reptarium, that's Brian Bartrix and there's all these, the Animal Zoo they got, Reptile Zoo. I got to call it the Palumbarium or something like that, you know, so I can make it original. But anyway, we're going to be building little by little more and more features that you can uh, really enjoy, uh, naturalistic settings. Ultimately, we'll build another building and we're going to be putting all that in there. But right now, we're just kind of doing it on a smaller scale in my building. You know, I have room, but I'm kind of running out of room. But that's just the way it goes. So we're, we're getting started. That's why I'm getting some new species that I haven't worked with because little by little we're building towards something grander in the future. And uh, hopefully you guys will like it. Uh, we're going to just take a look at a couple things in the snake room today that kind of uh, intrigues me because I, I still have to, I have to clean boas today. So you'll probably get a chance to see some more boa stuff. So without further ado, let's go into the snake room and see what we got going on. <laughs> Hello, my male sulcata tortoise is uh, getting a little afternoon munch on his uh, his romaine lettuce. Usually they eat in the morning and then they bury themselves and then I don't see him the rest of the day until the next morning. But he's, uh, for some reason he came out late. I think it was hot today, so he was like buried. He buried, They bury themselves when it's hot and then they come out a little later and they'll eat. He's really cool. He's like, uh, can you just leave me alone and let me just eat in peace, please? He's like my father. All right, we'll leave All right, guys, uh, we are finally, finally getting around to installing our lights that we got from Vivarium. Actually, we got it from reptilebasics.com. Pablo's been installing them. Pablo's idea was inside these six-foot vision cages to put two three-foot um, LED lights as opposed to one long one that wouldn't wouldn't take, go the whole length. Plus, in these vision cages, there's like a little middle piece. You see a little middle piece that kind of prevents you from going straight across. And I didn't really want to go up into the crease because then sometimes it diminishes the light. Right now, this looks perfect. Now, Pablo, how did you attach the, the, these these lights that you have in here? Show the lights we have. So you, it comes with these uh, little clips, and then this clips very easy to install. You just figure out where you want the light. And then you just put a little screw through. It the, doesn't even go through. The, it doesn't even perforate. It's a very short screw. Right? No, it's very short. And then once you do that, you just snap the light. The back of the light, this snaps in there once this is in place. And these are, are these the vivarium ones we got? Yeah. Yeah, these are the vivarium. And they have their own little splitter. So we use two in each cage. Yeah. And you you drill the hole through the side of my yeah. um, I drill vision the hole. cage. And I had to drill a little bit bigger because once you put one cable, then uh, you got less space to put the other one through. Right. And then once I did that, you bought some splitters. Showing here. Okay, so we can have two lights connected to one of these. One of these uh, little boxes. And there's also a dimmer though, which is pretty cool. Right. So you can actually make these things dimmer if you want and brighter which is kind of cool yeah. not that i'll probably keep them dimmer but maybe maybe we'll keep them, we won't have to keep them super bright yeah. and then we're going to put this on a timer too eventually up there yeah um to get all these on one bank so that at one time all the lights come on and then at some one time at night all of them go off yeah. i think this really brought a lot of light into this enclosure i mean we're going to be able to see i mean you can't even see the animals the normal the way they are now look i mean it's yeah. like so dark now we're going to actually be able to see the animals there. that's kind of cool give them some light and uh, now we can even put some, if we want to decorate the tanks or the cages, I should say, we can do that and you'll actually be able to see what's in there. So yeah. 
Good job, Pop. Now, we only have about, what, about 25 other ones to do now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 25 more. Now, so each cage, like the four foot is, I think we got four foot lights, though, for them, right? Yes, because we have uh, some four footers, like the uh, the taller ones. Yeah. We can put a four footer straight across. Right, and then we have some four footers that are shorter that we need to put two two footers, two, right? Two footers because it has this seam in the middle that i don't know why they put that scene there it's the stupidest thing of all time but i do love vision cages so i'm not going to complain too much about it all it's right just to give it a little bit uh of rigidity you know maybe yeah maybe um, all i know is that our big anaconda female is going to be going into this cage we're upgrading from a four footer down there into this cage she's going to be very happy all right there she is annie hall yeah, she ate a nice jumbo rat this past week. She's finally eating big prey now. We can get her up to a little faster. She can start growing. She's gorgeous, this girl. She's got some really, really nice patterning. I love those little circles on her. She's she's actually getting better as she's getting older, to be honest with you. So she's gonna like just chill out and explore her new cage. And we may actually even have to put like a little bit of a water bowl or water tub in here for her to kind of soak in because we know how much anacondas love their water, but they don't really need it. So I think I'm going to give her a bigger water bowl than that. That's a small water. Let's, we should get one of those corner water bowls, you know, the big ones that oh, we use. Yeah. Do we have any more of those? All right. I'm happy. All right, Annie Hall. Annie Hall, you love your new cage. I'm so happy. She wants to come out, I think. You want to come out? There you are. I'm so happy that you love your cage. One of the nicest looking fire diamonds you'll ever see. This is a central, a hypo, Central American tea positive. That's the Burke stone line of tea positive combined with that fire gene and the hypo gene. So you got a, basically a tea positive sun glow fire. And this boy is looking really nice here. What a beautiful little boy. Beautiful, look at that. Look at the purples in his tail. That tail. Let's, let's take a look at your tail here. Show us your tail. Just shed too. Look at those purples. Wow, that's really nice. We got a date with Destiny with your girlfriend, who's hopefully going to breed maybe the end of this year. Maybe we might get her in there. You guys might actually be paired up. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not sure if you guys are old enough yet. We'll find out. Eyes. All right, motley, het call albino, het blood, het leopard. Doesn't get better than that. This girl's been putting on some nice size. She's one of the nicest looking motleys. I've been showing you since she's born. She's just a really cool looking snake. Good eater. You know, she needs another year or two probably before she's breeding. She's a, she's a 20, so maybe, maybe next year it's possible. I, she's kind of small still. I think probably another two years, but take my time with her. I'm not in a rush. She's a beautiful looking snake though. Really nice personality too. It's a good temperament. All right, I had to show you this little girl. I'm cleaning cages. When I see a beautiful hypo labby, I can't stop the camera from running. This labyrinth boa morph is an incomplete dominant. The Super form is the crystal, which is a white blue-eyed snake, and not completely white. It's it's a, what we call blue-eyed leucistic. It's got all the dark turns to pink, and the rest of the snake turns white. And it's got blue eyes. But I'll show you the crystal in a minute. But this girl is just smoking. She's looking so good. In a couple of years, she's going to be some, doing some nice breeding here. All right. So I show you a crystal. There's a crystal who just shed. There it is, blue-eyed, white and pink snake. And they are gorgeous. This girl I'm growing up, and hopefully breed down the road. But I have some, I'm gonna, should be showing you in the next week or so, a beautiful hypolabian crystal litter I have. I haven't shown it to you yet, but, and those will be available. So if you guys like these labbies, I'm gonna do a whole video on, on labyrinth gene and crystals and all the future potential we got with these. Look at that eye. All right, a little uh, sneak peek. 
at a banana pastel clown that was bred to a pastel head clown. Two, two babies are out now. We have one clown, which is really nice. Someone's just asking me for a regular clown. I think I got it for you guys. You know who you are, contact me. You wanted a clown. I have a sex that I'm assuming it's a female because the male was a banana. So all the non bananas should be females. So that should be a female clown. Really nice one too. And this is a banana pastel head clown right here. I think someone had asked me for a male banana pastel head clown too. So two for two. And then we can take a little sneak peek inside these eggs here. Let's see what we got. That's banana something for sure. And this is not banana. I don't know if that's clown though. And that's banana something. It might be banana clown. So, cool clutch. That female really looks nice. She's very dark. She's like a really hyper dark clown. See all this stuff going on here? It almost looks like there's more than clown in there, but there isn't. Not that I know of. It's certainly, that's not pastel, so that's just clown. That's nice. This girl's really nice. Look at how dark she is. She's got like a lot of pattern on her. It almost looks like there's another darker gene in there, but nope. All right, and this clutch just hatched out. This was my experiment. This was my micro scale clown. So it was just, there was a clown with the, you know, the little mini microscales. The super form of the microscale is the super microscale, which is a scaleless animal. And I bred it to a pinstripe scaleless head. Let's see if I got that right. Yes, pinstripe scaleless head. And I wanted to see if the microscale and the scaleless head were allelic to each other. But I just think, I, th I just think we didn't hit the odds. We only had four babies here, so. We got two pinstripes, which makes sense. 50% should be pinstripes. And I don't know if they're scaleless head or, this feels like it's microscale to me. It's a really nice pinstripe. It's like a high definition pinstripe. That's like a high definition, just normal right there. So I would assume that's either microscale or scaleless head. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I got. I'm gonna have to analyze the results. This one's lighter. They're all heck clown, which is kind of cool. So they're valuable nonetheless. That's why I did the breeding. Because I figured, you know what? Even if I don't get anything, I'm gonna everything's gonna be heck clown. So I think this is microscale pinstripe heck clown. Look at that head. Look at that like triangular head. It's kind of a really interesting looking head right there. And this for for this being a normal just heck clown, I mean, that's pretty nice. I would probably say, I don't see any missing scales, but it feels micro scale to me. Let's see if we can see the, we gotta look at the anal scale. Let's see uh, right before the vent. And probably maybe you can take a look at this. Let's see if you can see if, what that vent looks like. Is that scale split right before the vent? No. No? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we don't have this, there's no scale, it's not scaleless. And we'll have to, we'll investigate all these. But anyway, we didn't, we didn't get a, we didn't get a micro scale scaleless head, so I don't know. We didn't, we didn't produce a scaleless animal, but that, like, once again, it was a 25% chance. So with only four snakes, you know, you could get it, but you could not also. So my experiment uh, really did not prove out. I have to almost repeat the experiment again. I'll keep you guys updated once these guys shed. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. It's uh, the rains are gonna be coming in soon and we're gonna be going in the pool before dinner here. So we gotta jump in before it starts raining. Actually, I don't even mind swimming in the rain. It's when the lightning comes, that gets a little, can get a little scary. You know, no one wants to get electrocuted in the pool, right? So I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, today's video and you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing, setting up with the lights and how we're gonna make things look really cool. You saw I did my little turtle Mata Mata turtle set up the other day. Matter of fact, I, I, I should have showed you, but I put a bunch of guppies in there. They all bred. There's, I have like a like hundred guppies down in that tank and no Mata Mata turtles yet. Tomorrow, Paul, is, uh, Paul Miller, my friend, is bringing over the Mata Mata turtles. So we'll have those two to show you tomorrow. Uh, he's also gonna be bringing me another little surprise, which we'll talk about, some tree boas. I'm gonna set those up. 
And he actually has something else, but uh, I don't know if we're ready to, to move up to that yet. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, tomorrow when I see Paul and uh, hopefully he'll let me interview him. And we'll talk about some of the stuff that he's got planned for the future as well. As you know, he's a huge importer of venomous uh, reptiles, snakes, and all that cool stuff. And we're going to have to head over to his house one of these days and uh, catch up and see what he's got going on there as well. That's always fun. All right. Uh, for now, uh, I, oh, I wanted to bring up one thing. I, you know, I'm not a huge bearded dragon like fanatic or anything like that, but I'll, I got to tell you, I love these. The, have you seen these zero bearded dragons? They're like white. They have like no color. They're just white. I love white anything. These are really cool. I'll put up a picture. They've been around for a while, but I don't know. I just saw one today on Facebook and it was looking so awesome that I just wanted to mention it and give a little shout out. Really, really, really nice. If you're going to get a bearded dragon, those zeros you can't go wrong with. All right, uh, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.